Hello, I'm Jashikins, and I'm here to talk about the following episode, Love Hurts. Now, there is something really emotional that happened that... Lots of things on this show seem to happen out of the blue, but it somehow fits into your image. I mean, there's things here and there that happen that you're like, I was really fucking surprised. Jacob makes his first kill in this episode. But it's not just a random person. It's Paul. You know, his lover. And it's not just killing him. It's that Jacob killed Paul so that he didn't have to worry about an extra burden or someone that might possibly give insight into the cult, which would be a bad thing. But it's not even that. It's the fact that Paul told Jacob too. And Paul knew that his death would be significant that his death would mean the cult would be safe, that Joe Carroll's mission would be safe. So he tells Jacob and Jacob kills him and it's very heartbreaking because Jacob has never killed anyone and now he's killing someone that he loves and that loves him back and saying to kill him. It was really fucking tear-jerking because it's like no, no. It's a very emotional scene, very charged, and it just works wonderfully. It's a great type of pain, a great type of hurt to feel. I don't like feeling it, but I do. So it was. When Paul tells Jacob to kill him, Paul brings up the fact that Jacob owed him for something done in the past. And then before Jacob kills Paul, he just says, I love you. It's just fucking heartbreak. It's like, get the... And then what's great is that afterwards, Jacob comes back to, you know, Joe Carroll's hangout. And what happens? He sees Emma, and Emma is like, oh, fuck. Because she left Jacob and Paul to die. No, not really to die, but just like ran away with Joey and not worrying about the other two. So Jacob's pissed because here's this woman who he loved and that because of her actions, he had to make his first kill someone he loved that told him to kill him. So, of course, Jacob blames Emma for all that. And Emma is having her own problems because Emma... Tried to you know, get it on with Joe. And last episode he was like, no, 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 no. No, I'm loyal to my wife. Because Joe Carroll, while well, he's a serial killer, loves his wife and child. Loves them. And so he feels guilty about sleeping with Emma. So he's like, don't indicate to anyone else that we did it. And she's like, why not? And I just think the reason is because Joel feels dirty about betraying his ex-wife in his mind. Claire is still his wife. And also that maybe if Joe's shown to be disloyal to such a big part of his life, the other cult members might thinking. 
They were doing some insane shit here. He, whatever the case, he, he doesn't want Emma to show it. And, well, at one of the parties, Roderick brings up to Emma that, well, it's a dick about, you know, her leaving Jacob to die, Jacob and Paul to die. Of course, the overarching thing of Roderick's speech seems to be that life is complicated. There are gray areas. Nothing is black and white. And of course, that comes off really dickishly. <laughs> but anyways, Emma has been let down by Joe, who she's staring at across the room. She's been be it being down by Roderick, and now at the end of the episode, she's seeing Jacob and probably thinks, oh fuck, my life is so fucked up, it seems that I couldn't make it last with Joe, except for one bang, and now the guy I loved before is, I betrayed, and now I'm not going to get any from him either. Probably. He's going to also probably try to kill me. So yeah, none of them are in good situations. And I spent most of <coughs> this episode talking about the killers. Let's look at Ryan Hardy. Ryan Hardy this week had to deal with one of the cult members, which is really like this Groupy cult member, like, I've got this idea, and I, ho I, ho I hope you like it. <laughs> Who is going around killing people named Claire Matthews. Who is, of course, Joe's ex-wife. And so Ryan Hardy is trying to deal with that, and deal with the fact that he hopes, you know, Claire doesn't turn on the news and find out. And he had a nice conversation with Joe, where, of course, the usual mouse ass was shown. And it really seemed like Joe was talking about himself, but pretended to be talking about Ryan Harding, Hardy. Really good conversation there. So, and of course, he finds the killer and kills the killer saves the final Claire Matthews from death. And it was really funny that the groupie was all, oh, I want my chapter to have a happy ending. I was just thinking, do you know what show you're on? You're not on a show that ever gives you happy endings. There might be some nice moments, but it's creepy and depressing. Yeah, and your chapter ain't gonna have a happy ending pitch. But yeah, also with Ryan Hardy, at the start of the episode, he and his basically boss are harassed by the people in power like, what did you do? No, yelled at him for that, and one of the get one of the people in the meeting is like, "You do realize we're just going over shit; it's not an inquisition." So yeah, people in charge are getting mad that he's not solving shit, and it's really annoying. <laughs> it's like he's doing the best he can at the moment. He's made mistakes. He's not perfect, but. What are you guys? Okay, you have, what would you do? You have this cult that can be anyone, any, anywhere. It's like a version of Invasion of the Body Snatchers. And yeah, you, you tell us your fucking idea. How do you want it to go up spout? You don't have an idea? Okay, stop getting in our asses. So I found that confusing, but it sort of does match people in power, I think. 
Everyone should get shit done for us now, pronto. Not like they're human or anything. But yeah. All in all, a good episode. The following love hurt had really one of the most touching scenes for me. And it involved two killers. It also has Ryan Hardy, you know, Kevin Bacon, uh, one of the people I follow on Tumblr, obsessed with Kevin Bacon, so he was there, he showed his ass, he saved the day. Nothing in this episode was like, oh, that's an awesome Ryan Hardy moment. It's like, meh. He's there, he's good, but he didn't really stick out that much this episode to me. And if I have been Jashikin's owner at jashikins.blogspot.com. If you want to follow me or talk to me for whatever reason, you can do so on facebook.com slash Jashikin's fan page or on Twitter at Jashikin's. <coughs> or finally on Tumblr at jashikins.tumblr.com. And if you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe, like, comment, do whatever. If you're watching this on my blog, comment below, share. Thank you just for watching. And now that you're on my blog, explore. And I can't wait till next episode of the following. And it's gone to season two. And until next video, goodbye.